It's the thing that defines your unique sound more than anything else. Let's talk about how to develop vibrato. All right, this has been my most requested video so far, so I'm very excited to be able to share with you how to develop your vibrato. As a prerequisite to learning vibrato, I would recommend you've already mastered these things. First, you need to have a relaxed, balanced, and stable violin setup, meaning you can hold the violin in a relaxed way without clamping with your shoulder. Vibrato requires a very loose left arm, and if you're starting with a very tense shoulder, you will almost certainly not have the flexibility you need to develop a loose vibrato. You should also be able to play very consistently in tune before beginning vibrato. Contrary to popular belief, vibrato does not disguise intonation. Rather, the pitch that we hear is the one that we reach at the top of every oscillation. So if your ear and fingers aren't already clear about how to hit a distinct pitch, vibrato will only complicate things. If these things are intact, I think you're ready to give it a go. The first thing I want you to understand about developing your vibrato is that it has a very long time horizon. There are some techniques or bow strokes that you can truly master in a couple of weeks with some dedicated practice. I don't really feel vibrato is that way. Instead, what I want you to do is have a very regular routine where you devote five or 10 minutes to it every day for a long period of time. Don't get frustrated if it doesn't come quickly and if your progression doesn't seem linear. This is very common and I promise if you do the exercises regularly and correctly, over time you're gonna develop a beautiful vibrato. The first thing that I want you to do when you're starting to want to develop your vibrato is just to grab an egg shaker. And I basically just want this to become a fidget toy for you over the next few weeks. Holding the egg loosely with these three fingers, get into a position that roughly estimates what it feels like to play on the violin. In particular, I want you to be thinking about what it would feel like to play a fourth finger on the violin, so getting around the invisible instrument. In this position, I just want you to shake the egg back and forth, staying as relaxed as you can. The main thing that we're developing here is the overall motion of the vibrato. The bicep is the main instigator of the motion, and then all of the joints need to be loose so we get a whip-like motion at the end. Perhaps the most critical thing to be thinking about at this point in the exercise is just ensuring that everything is loose, particularly for me, the wrist. If you know already the difference between arm and wrist vibrato, just know that I do not like to be fussy about this in the early stages. I just like to create as much flexibility as possible in both the wrist and the arm. I usually find that students develop a vibrato that works fairly naturally for them. And then at some point, I do like to focus intentionally on developing whatever vibrato is weak in the student. After getting comfortable with this motion, I like to add the challenge of holding the instrument while still making that motion happen. Initially, I like to have something that helps to support the weight of the instrument so I don't feel like I have to squeeze with my neck and shoulders, which by the way, will absolutely kill your vibrato. Vibrato really relies on complete flexibility of the left arm, and if we have a lot of clamping going on in the shoulder and in the neck, it's very unlikely that we'll be able to loosen up all of these joints to the point where we're getting a beautiful, relaxed vibrato. So setting the scroll on a soft surface that can support the weight of the instrument, I want you to do the motion that you've been practicing. So once that's comfortable, I like to take the egg shaker away and put my hand where it normally would be in order to play the violin. In this position, I'm gonna let one of my fingers rest on the string without pressing and try to just slide up and down the instrument. Feel free to do this with all of the fingers. The motion should still feel pretty much the same, no matter what finger's down. After getting to the point where this is comfortable, you can take away the support for the instrument and start holding it yourself, and then try to do the same motion. It is very essential before you do vibrato that you have your setup worked out, meaning the way that you're holding the instrument. Now this might seem very basic, but believe me, it is not. Learning to hold the instrument in a relaxed, balanced, and still supported way is very difficult and requires tweaking throughout your life as you understand more and more about the instrument. I will certainly be making a video on this topic, and when I do, I'll post it here. It is something that you need to clearly have worked out if you hope to be successful with your vibrato. All right, just one more preparatory exercise before we get into actually playing some vibrato on the instrument. As I said before, it's mostly the bicep that initiates the motion of vibrato, and then through a series of flexible joints, it makes its way to the end of our hand. The very last joint that needs to be flexible is the last one in your finger. This motion is actually the only motion, ultimately, that causes the pitch to bend. And therefore, it's very essential to vibrato to make sure that you have flexibility in that last joint. For this, I like to go to the shoulder of the instrument and just place down one finger at a time. And then I just allow that last knuckle to collapse. I would do 25 of these a day for at least a week before trying to move on to the next exercises. 
This exercise is useful in opening up the dexterity of that last digit, but I don't find that it really imitates the motion of vibrato very accurately, so I don't like to linger on it for too long. Okay, so it's time to get to the bread and butter exercise, the one that every teacher I know uses when starting to develop vibrato. For the exercise, you're gonna to wanna to grab a metronome and you're gonna to wanna to throw it onto 60 beats per minute. Basically what we're gonna do is practice rolling the finger back and forth, and then we're gonna progress the speed that we do that at. As you're doing this, you want to be very careful about ingraining the correct motion into your hand. Here's a couple of things to watch out for. First of all, it will be very tempting to squeeze tighter than you need to. You'll be tempted to squeeze with your thumb, the finger that's on the fingerboard, and also, many people are tempted to sort of squeeze the neck sideways in between their thumb and the base of the index finger. This really kills vibrato because the base of the index finger has to be able to slide freely along the side of the instrument in order for vibrato to work. So be sure that you're using as little pressure as possible and that the only pressure that is being used is counter pressure sort of in an upward diagonal direction between the thumb and the finger that's being pressed down. We want to avoid any sort of sideways squeezing in the hand. And the second idea is to make sure that your arm is set up in a very relaxed position, that your elbow is rolled a comfortable distance underneath the instrument to give your wrist the ability to be in a very neutral position. Again, we want to make sure that the neck and shoulders are relaxed to allow complete freedom in the left arm. Now, the motion itself is a backwards roll of the finger towards the scroll. It's not a slide. And you'll notice that as I do that backwards roll, that front knuckle is collapsing. The base of my index finger is moving loosely along the side of the instrument, and it's moving straight back towards the scroll. It's not moving sideways away from the violin. One thing to be mindful of is that in order to help the base of the index finger to not squeeze, you can allow there to be a little bit of space in between the neck of the instrument and the base of the index finger. Also be sure that the finger is contacting the string at a good angle. We want to be on the inside corner of the finger. This would be outside corner. We want to be on the inside corner to allow it to roll back in the direction of the scroll. With these things in mind, be very patient when you're doing the exercise. Particularly in the early stages, more important than getting through all of the speeds is ensuring that you are doing it correctly, that the motion that you are ingraining with your hand is the correct motion. Forcing your hand to move faster in a tense way is probably not gonna have good long-term results. One extra comment here for the exercise, when you get to the point where you're doing three of these oscillations at a time with the beat, it can often be a little bit complicated because the beat lands on not just the arrival pitch, but the pitch that's bent down. This can be a complicated transition to make, so just be aware that the beat is going to land on that lower oscillation when you're doing triplets. When you're first doing this exercise, I'd recommend doing every single speed for 20 seconds. This means that each finger will take two minutes, with four fingers that brings you to eight minutes. I've got a follow along video here that you can use when you're practicing to keep you organized. It's got a metronome on there and I also stick roughly to the 20 second time constraint. As you're developing your vibrato, you likely will not be able to go to the faster speeds right at the first, that's fine. Just stop at whatever speed is your max and linger there and try to stretch yourself. While trying to stretch yourself, do make sure not to travel too far into the tension world and make sure that your form and the correctness of the motion is still there. This exercise is really the bread and butter for vibrato, and you're gonna be doing it for a long period of time. Certainly for at least a year, maybe longer. And even once you're done doing it daily, I still keep it on the back burner and revisit it from time to time. Now this exercise is where many teachers stop when it comes to developing vibrato, and I do think it's a mistake. This exercise is quite good at developing the motion of vibrato. 
I don't think it's fantastic at developing the feel of vibrato. The feel of the vibrato is what we were working on more when we were doing the egg shaker. This is the next natural development of that exercise. I call this exercise shake and slide. If you'll remember, in our preparation exercises, we got to the point where we could hold the instrument and slide the hand up and down the fingerboard. We're gonna start with that and there's gonna be a continuation to the exercise. This exercise is designed to help us get the correct feel of vibrato. When you get even to the faster speeds of the previous exercise, it's not really going from here to there to here to there to here to there. Eventually you get to a point where it's going so fast that going back and forth doesn't feel quite right and it needs to eventually become this natural motion that's instigated from the bicep. So when we're doing this slide, we have zero pressure on the sliding finger. All we're gonna do is add a hint of pressure onto the sliding finger until it stops moving. When the pressure is enough to keep the finger from moving, the motion will gradually just turn into vibrato. It's still a very small amount of pressure. My finger isn't really getting that close to touching the fingerboard yet. After getting to the point where it stops moving, then again, decrease the pressure until it starts to slide again. Go back and forth until you've done this for about 60 seconds, and then at the end, I would linger in the vibrato portion. Trying to stay loose for as long as possible. When you're feeling real confident that the vibrato is moving well, you can also add the bow to it and see how it sounds. Now we're not being careful at all about where this finger stops. You don't need to stop in first position, for example. So it may be out of tune when you add the bow to it. That's no problem. That's not what we're working on here. We're just working on getting the right feel for the vibrato motion. Do the same progression with each of the fingers for the 60 seconds with lingering at the end. I find that having this two-pronged approach to developing vibrato is better than just lingering on that bread and butter exercise that we just went over. The first exercise will help you to get the proper motion down and start to get it a little bit more up to speed. And then the second exercise will help you to get into the proper feel of the hand moving fluidly. Once both of these exercises are working fairly fluidly, I like to turn to scales as my playground for starting to apply vibrato into my playing. Simply try to vibrate while you're doing your scales with a particular focus on being loose and wide. If the vibrato is very slow at this point, I think that's totally fine. When you're doing the vibrato in the scale, it can be helpful to think about the whole hand vibrating rather than specific fingers vibrating. So when you switch fingers, the hand continues to move and there isn't a feel of start and stop based on what finger is down. That covers it for starting to learn the basics of your vibrato. This should get you to the point where you have a relaxed, usable vibrato. If you want to take your vibrato to the next level, develop an individualistic sound and a lot of variety in your vibrato, check out this video here.